Today I want to implement a machine that performed the sum but in a different way than in the previous episode. So all I want is to implement the function z that is the sum of two numbers but not in decimal representation like 43 but in binary representation because the computer works with bits. So for example in case of 43 the binary representation is 101011 because 1 plus 2 plus 8 plus 32 is a 43 and the same for y that for example can be equal to 6 that is 110 in the last episode I implemented the sum in a combinatory way. So the variable x is represented by n inputs, one for digits and the same for the y variable and we have a lot of outputs that represent the variable z that is the sum of the two variables. This combinatory block works well when we talk about small numbers but it's difficult to scale up and sum very big number. So today we are talking about a sequential logic block that uh, instead of the combinatory block uh, takes account on memory. The sequential logic uh, uses a clock uh, to manage uh, the time of operation, a reset variable used uh, to switch on uh, the logic, and then uh, there are the x and y inputs uh, that are uh, still uh, binary digits uh, but they are function of time. So for example the x variable can be peak, a valley, a peak, a valley and a peak, a peak, and the same for uh, the y variable. So to create this sequential block we must talk about states. States are all the information that we must know to perform the evolution of the system. I represent the state with bubble. For example there is the fourth state that is S0 and we enter in this state when we switch on the machine, so when the reset variable is switched on. These states for now have an output 0 because we don't know what we are summing. The info of the states is I don't know what are the previous x and y input. From these states there can be different transition. For example, if I receive an x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 in input, what happens to the system? Output will be 0 because 0 plus 0 is 0 and then there is no carry. But if we think about it, this state is really equal to S0 because the output is 0 and there is no previous information so there is no carry. So the transition return to S0. We can change the information of S0 in no carry states with zero output. Then what happens if x is equal to 1 in input and y equal to 0 or vice versa? So x equal to 0 and y equals 1, then we enter in a new state that I name S1 in which there is no carry but the output will be 1 because 0 plus 1 or 1 plus 0 is 1. And the last case is when the x and y will be both equal to 1. In principle the output must be 1, 0 but the output consists only in 1 bit so the output will be 0 but there is a carry. We must repeat this operation for uh, all the possible states and then we obtain the final diagram. Here you are, this is the final diagram that presents all the possible states and all the possible transition. And what we are going to do with this diagram is very simple. We create a truth table that understands from which input we obtain which output. There are the inputs x, y and current states and the output that is the next state and the z output that is the sum. And then I must write all the possible combination of x, y and s and from each combination I must understand what's happened in the next state. So for example if we are in state 0 and we receive a 0 from the diagram we know that we re-enter in the s0 state. Instead, if we receive a 0, 1 and 1, 1, 0 from the diagram, we see that we enter in S1 and then we must repeat this operation for all the elements of the table. You must do also for the output, but the output is based only on the state, so we can divide the table in four parts and the output will be 0, 1, 0 and 1. Now we must represent the states as something that we can manage, so we must transform states in bits, for example, as 0. 
zero is zero zero, s one is zero one, s two is one zero, and s three is one one, where the first digit is A and the second digit is B. We have a process uh, that uh, comprend uh, Carnot maps, uh, minimization process. Uh, we arrive at uh, three formula for the output. This is not the goal of the video, I'm sorry. Why is it important to obtain this information? Because now with this formula we can enter in Simulink and create the logic. So in Simulink we must have an input that is a function of time, one for x and one for y, and then we want the true flip-flop, the store information about the states. The flip-flop must have a clock in input, a constant in the input of the reset variable, and a terminal in the not Q exit because we don't want to use it. So we can transform this flip flop in another system that is already ready, already ready, already ready, already ready. With this information, when there is a plus in the formula, I must insert a OR gate in the simulink. Then when there is a multiplication, I must insert a AND gate. And then, when there is a NOT variable, I must insert a NOT gate. Put together all the information. We sum 43, that is 101011, with 6, that is 110, and we obtain... Magic! 49. Fuck yeah!